everyone and welcome to another episode of Solving Problems in My Farm. My name is Carla Garcia, Hort America's Technical Service and Consultant, and today we're going to learn about lighting on microgreens. So we have learned in previous videos about uh, how to grow microgreens and how to avoid fungi inside of plant factories. But today we're going to learn on how to select the lamps and which aspects are important when managing light on microgreens. So first, let's start dividing the information so we can have order. So uh, we're going to speak about light quality, light quantity and photo period. So first, let's speak about light quality. So for these, we'll speak about the colors. We have learned about light quality is equal to the colors of light, the light spectrum that we are providing to our plants. So microgreens are plants that they don't, requ they don't require a lot of light. Um, so it's easy sometimes to, to choose a light that is not developed for horticulture, meaning like white LEDs that you can buy in a regular uh, store. Uh, however, it's important to know that uh, there are specific requirements for the plants and uh, there are specific advantages of using the lights that are made for horticulture. So in this case, uh, when you are delivering light in a, a good way for plants, so in this case, providing the colors that we know are more important for photosynthesis, you can also save money uh, thinking about your operational expenses. So which is the reason behind this? Uh, when we are delivering light to our plants, we want to use the colors of light that the plants are using the most. If you use the unit that we call PPF, photosynthetic photon flux, you will notice that a photosynthetic photon flux is higher when you have a good light quality. And, and, and with that, we'll have like a more efficient lamp. Uh, usually red and blue, we know are very efficient colors. So that's why we, we always want to keep those colors on our lamps. Um, the percentage can obviously be different uh, for microgreens. We don't want to have a lot of uh, blue because blue uh, makes the plant, plants a little bit compact. So for microgreens, we want, you know, like elongated microgreens. I mean, not deformed, but elongated. We don't want very compact plants because it's very difficult to harvest. So um, if you have more red and then a little percentage of blue, that will be fine. Uh, also, for microgreens, when you are working inside of a facility uh, like this one, uh, you want also to be able to see the crop, right? So for that, I recommend to use a full spectrum lamp that will have red, blue, and also a little bit of white, because that way you can see your plants, you can notice if there is any, you know, um, problem with the plants, uh, if you have fungi or um, uh, nutrition, nutrient deficiency or something. So uh, usually for microgreens, we recommend to have a full spectrum, meaning that you will have a little bit of green, uh, you will have red color in a higher way, and you will, you will have also a little bit of blue. So here are some examples of uh, light spectrums that we manage in Puerto Americas. So you can see in here uh, the spectrums and you can see the percentages for different lamps. So in this case, for microgreens, we usually work with PKR or PKB. Uh, for uh, having good growth with microgreens. Remember, you can use also like white LEDs. I mean, it's possible to grow microgreens with white LEDs, but if you think on how are you using light and the benefits that you can get on your operational expenses, meaning your electric bill, you need to think about uh, the light quality. If you don't have a lot of red or blue, which are the colors that are more important for photosynthesis, uh, you probably will uh, have some uh, disadvantages on the growth of your plants. And also, you need to add to that that sometimes white LEDs, you know, like regular runs, are, uh, are lamps that are not designed for a room, uh, meaning humidity, uh, sometimes they, they don't last very long. Um, so usually the lamps that are made for horticulture, I mean the good brands um, with uh, the DLC requirements, um, they will last long, like five years of warranty, and uh, they will also have more efficacy. So it's not just about the colors, but also about, you know, all the electric components of the lamps that they high. I mean, the, the, qual the quality here is high. So you will have a lamp that will last longer and you will deliver the colors that the plants requires. So now let's speak about light intensity. So in this case, as I mentioned, uh, microgreens, they don't require a lot of light. So usually you will require fewer lamps if you're just growing microgreens in comparison to uh, lettuce, for example, or basil. 
Uh, if you're growing lettuce and basil, you can grow also microgreens under those lights. Uh, but if you are growing microgreens and you're thinking on also put some lettuce in there, you probably will require a little bit more light. Uh, in here, you can notice, for example, we have, you know, these like normal racks that you can find at store. Uh, and we have uh, one lamp per layer. So for microgreens, this is fine. But if you have a lettuce or something else in the same space, you will, you will require a little bit more light. So for uh, microgreens, we usually can work with uh, light intensity between 180 to 200 or 250. That will be fine. Uh, what we want to provide to the plant uh, is a DLI between 8 and 12. Uh, 8 is actually fine. Uh, it will depend, obviously, on uh, how quickly you want the plants to grow. Uh, if you have more light, I mean, if, if you for the, for the period is longer, and uh, you are providing more DLI, um, you will speed up a little bit your crop. But again, you have to choose depending on uh, the electricity cost and the benefits of the growth. But again, you will require uh, from 180 to 250 micromoles. So if you're thinking on choosing a light, uh, you can uh, ask obviously to the light supplier about this information uh, to get information in PPF, which is photosynthetic photon flux. And that will be 180 to 250 micromoles per square meter per second. Uh, if you are using a different unit, I mean, if you are measuring a luxus or watts per square meter, it's possible to make conversions to PPF, but I always recommend to have a sensor that can measure on PPF and uh, try to maintain a DLI between 8 to 12. So the DLI, if you are new to these uh, topics, uh, the DLI is the amount of light that the plant is receiving per day. And I will provide the formula uh, for that in here. So you can uh, calculate the DLI based on uh, the photo period and the light intensity of your lamps. And last but not less important, we have photo period. So for the photo period, um, again, microgreens, they don't require a lot of light, but they also don't get a stress because you're uh, using a lot of hours of light. They will get a stress if you have a lot of intensity on the light. Um, so for plants that produce flowers and fruits, we know that you need to have a time of darkness. So this is a different case for leafy greens. But if the light intensity is too high, um, you can have problems because of the photons that are hitting your, your plants, not because of the photo period. So we don't want to uh, play and uh, put like 24 hours to our microgreens. I mean, that's not required. Um, usually we want to maintain between uh, 16 to 18 hours of light. It will depend on the light intensity uh, that you are using. Uh, you can play around with the DLI formula and calculate the photo period based on the light intensity and the DLI that you have. So usually this is what we usually do in order to know uh, the hours that you are turning on your lights. So we want to make sure that we are targeting a specific DLI and that we can maintain that so you can have consistency on your production. And speaking about light in microgreens, uh, these are all the most important topics that we can cover, like intensity, the light quality, and also the photo period. So now you know a little bit more about lighting and microgreens. If you have any questions about how to choose lights, in Horta Americas, we provide lighting options. We have sensors to measure on PPF. And we also, uh, the, we deliver, I mean, for the people that is interested in our lights, we can deliver a light plan so you can get an idea of uh, how many lamps uh, you are requiring for each layer for your system and the uniformity that you will have and how to place the lamps and everything. So if you are interested, let us know on the comment section. So that's all the information for today. Remember, my name is Carla Garcia, Hort America's technical service and consultant. And follow us if you want to keep learning about horticulture.